Fortunately, get worse before it gets better. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And that is a powerful ad outside uh, out this week, rather, from the Lincoln Project. And its title, Failure, honing in on the president's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. In his own words, from the first confirmed case in January to today, as the number of cases in this country surpasses four million. And it is just one of the many scathing ads the group of anti-Trump Republicans created in an effort to unseat the president in November. Joining me now, co-founder of the Lincoln Project, Rick Wilson, author of Running Against the Devil, A Plot to Save America from Trump. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming back to the show, Rick. Um, we got to get right into this here because you have produced some of the most powerful campaign ads that we've seen, not just in this election cycle, in any election. What is the feedback that you've been getting? Have you seen data that suggests these ads are as effective as they feel when we watch them? Well, we know very, we know very clearly that our ads are it, set up in two big strategic areas. First off, the ads that are litigating this campaign against Donald Trump are moving and persuading voters. Uh, we see that data moving all the time. We see that information coming to us because we are out there uh, pushing on the sorest of spots for Donald Trump right now. The first is his utter failure and mishandling of the COVID crisis, which has led to the deaths of nearly 150,000 Americans. It is a continuing crisis. That's why we're going to continue to litigate it uh, with with some of this advertising, yeah, the, and we know we're moving voters with that. Donald Trump's slippage is is marked, and in places we've done test testing on it, it's absolutely driving numbers. The second column of ads that we're doing, you know, are primarily the psychological warfare against Donald Trump. He can't look away. He can't stop concentrating on us. His entire campaign right now, as of this minute, is wrapped around the axle trying to pursue the founders of the Lincoln Project. Um, using every resource they can to try to take us down, and you know we we welcome their we welcome their attempt, but it's also a sign of just how deeply we're under Donald Trump's skin. Yeah, you know another angle that I will suggest uh, where he uh, overwhelmingly gets bad rem uh, bad bad marks rather is his general lack of decency. You touched on that component in another new ad sure. focused on the president's remarks this week on alleged uh, Jeffrey Epstein accomplice Ghislaine Maxwell wishing her well mm -hmm. in her trial. Take a look at that. A woman accused of being at the center of an international child rape ring. And the president of the United States says... I just wish her well, frankly. Had enough? On November 3rd, it's time to return honor and dignity to the White House. How about this, Rick? Do you think that this general lack of decency from this president is the breaking point where some Republicans are saying, look, I may agree with some of his policies, but I just can't stomach this anymore? Sure. You know, in 2016, Alex, there were a lot of Republicans who said, I just can't vote for Hillary. There'd been a 30-year campaign run against her, essentially, to make her this mythological monster in the eyes of Republicans. And they said, oh, I, I don't love Trump, but I'm, I can't vote for her. Well, this is a different landscape now because they've seen that Donald Trump is a fundamentally amoral, corrupt, indecent, and loathsome human being. He has terrible values. He is unable to govern this country. He's unable to accomplish any of the things he claims he would accomplish. And so they've had enough. And is it the majority of Republicans? No. But he can't afford to lose even 3 or 4% of the Republican base, or he's going to go down this fall. And so we're going to continue to push on that angle because we know there are a lot of Republicans and it's a growing number of Republicans mm -hmm. and conservatives and independent leaning conservatives who are done. They've had enough. They are not going to be a party to this man's absolute failure and his and his absolutely low, the low characters surrounding him, they're just done. You know, it's interesting. You bring up something uh, I read, and I suspect you did as well, in the Washington Post this week. It was an article titled Republican Feuding. This week represents broader reckoning over parties' future as Trump sinks in, the pol sinks in the polls. And it says in part, Rick, Trump came from nowhere five years ago to effectively take over the Republican Party, remaking it into a seeming cult of personality that has repeatedly violated the party's supposed orthodoxies. But this week, Dustin stops are bringing into relief the fault lines and competing personalities that will define the coming war over the soul of the post-Trump GOP. What do you make of that? There are so many groups of Republicans, just like the Lincoln Project. Uh, they're emerging and they are against Trumpism. What does it tell you about the future of the Republican Party? And let me ask you this as well, as a Republican, which I know you are, if the Democrats win the White House, the Senate and the House, how does that make you feel as a Republican? 
Well, you know, Alex, the entire Republican Party, almost every single elected official, bent the knee to Donald Trump. They said that their principles don't matter, their beliefs that they've stated for generations don't matter, nothing in their, nothing matters except adoration, worship, and compliance with Donald Trump. And that's almost every single one of them. Those people have put a political target on their backs and on the party forever. They sit silent when there are children in cages. They sit silent when, and they vote to exonerate him when he was obviously guilty in the Ukraine matter. They have let every excess go past. They have let every single behavior go past. They have pretended that he is, is, is beautifully clad when he is, in fact, the buck-naked emperor of our time. Mm. There's nothing about Donald Trump that won't stick on these folks. So when the Republican Party tries to emerge from this and, and you know, run to the showers, it's not going to work. There's going to be a memory that he has done so much damage to this country. He has caused the deaths, as of now, of 150,000 Americans. He has caused what is going to be a gigantic economic collapse. Nothing that Donald Trump um, got out of these people will they ever get in return. They are stained by Donald Trump. And so the Republican Party, as it is comprised right now, is a nationalist populist party with an authoritarian cult at its center. It's not worth reviving at this point. Do we need a center-right party in this country? We absolutely do. Is Donald Trump's party going to be that? Absolutely not. And the people that, that enabled him and empowered him this entire time, they are going to be the ones who have to answer to this in the end. And when they and in, in politics, pain is the only teacher. Mm -hmm. And the pain they're going to suffer from having legislative defeats going forward is going to really be the thing that, that, that shows where the bill came due. So does that mean that the Republican Party pre-Trump, the, the Republican Party that you would align yourself to, is it dead as you know it? Well, you know, I come from that older era, like George Bush 41, Jack Kemp era of the party that inspired people like, like me to get into politics and, and, and the, the Reagan era. What is there now is not about individual liberty or the Constitution or free markets or the rule of law or, or, or personal freedom. This is an authoritarian personality cult. It doesn't exist as the, the, Donald Trump is a parasite and he hollowed out the inside of the Republican Party and he kept it shell. But other, everything else is this this creature that's inside of it now, and that is Trump and Trumpism. And in my view, that has to go. And and if if there's a Democratic majority to take it out, that is that is the the, the chemo this party may need to even survive. Rick Wilson, never at a loss for words, which I appreciate here on the show. Thank you so much. Good to see you. <laughs>